She has associated herself and her name with those who are. That is independently troubling. I'm not saying that she herself is anti-Semitic, and it doesn't depend on that assertion, because that's not the assertion at all. My understanding, Senator Cruz, did you seek recognition? No. Yes, <laughs> you did. Although I was behind Senator Hirono, so I'm happy to let her go first. He's going back and forth. I'm happy to go now as well, too. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the nominee before this committee is extreme, even in the spectrum of nominees this committee has considered. And Kristen Clark and Vanita Gupta, two nominees that have been before this committee in the past month, are two of the most radical nominees that have ever been put forward to any position in the federal government. It speaks volumes that President Biden is willing to nominate two radicals to be senior officials of the Department of Justice. And it speaks volumes that Senate Democrats are willing to rubber stamp those choices. Senate Democrats are fond of saying that they don't advocate abolishing the police. That's understandable. That's probably good politics. Their voters most assuredly don't support abolishing the police. It is only the radicals. It is only the extreme left that advocates abolishing the police. But today's proceedings and the proceedings of the past month have made clear that every single Democratic member of the United States Senate is now on record supporting abolishing the police. Why is that? Because every single Democrat voted to confirm Vanita Gupta. This week, Senator Blumenthal chaired a hearing on guns in which he and I had an exchange where I observed that every Democrat had voted for a nominee who had submitted written testimony advocating for abolishing the police. Senator Blumenthal unfortunately did what is now commonplace in so-called Senate debate, which is he simply stated things that were manifestly untrue. And Senator Blumenthal said, as you well know, Senator Cruz, that is a complete distortion. We're here to talk about the nominees. So the that that was a complete distortion is that I said she had submitted written testimony to this body advocating abolishing the police. I have in front of me that written testimony that she submitted on June 20th, June 18th, rather, 2020, so less than a year ago, where in writing Ms. Gupta advocates abolishing the police explicitly, unequivocally, with no wiggle room. And Mr. Chairman, with that, uh, I'd ask unanimous consent to enter this testimony into the record today. Without objection. Now, in today's bizarre Twitter world, of course, what happened is all the lefty journalists immediately leapt on Senator Blumenthal's statement and said, see, he's proven it is a complete distortion because he said it. Facts are stubborn things. Ms. Gupta, in writing, less than a year ago advocated to the U.S. Senate that the police should be abolished. Simply asserting that's not the case doesn't make it go away. There's a reason at her hearing, Ms. Gupta had to run away from her previous advocacy and say, I don't believe that now. Because less than a year ago she advocated it. But you know, this isn't a one-off. We have two nominees who have explicitly advocated abolishing the police. Now, Ms. Clark, June 11th, 2020, so less than a year ago, wrote an op-ed in Newsweek. The op-ed is entitled, I Prosecuted Police Killings. Defund the police, but be, be strategic. And Mr. Chairman, I'd ask unanimous consent to enter this op-ed in the record as well. Now, Mr. Blumenthal said just a moment ago, well, it's the title of the op-ed. She didn't pick the title of the op-ed. OK, fine except the title reflects exactly what is in the text that she wrote. And by the way, it's by Kristen Clark, not by Kristen Clark and anybody else, just her. The second paragraph of her op-ed reads, begins, into that space has surged a unifying call from the Black Lives Matter movement, defund the police. 
Now, my colleagues, you cannot argue that someone doesn't want to defund the police when they describe the unifying call from Black Lives Matter, defund the police. But you say, what does that mean? Well, the next paragraph, Ms. Clark elaborates. Among activists and local governments, the meaning of defund the police ranges from reining in municipal police budgets to complete police abolition. For example, the majority of the Minneapolis City Council pledged to dismantle their police force. We then have later in the op-ed three consecutive paragraphs that begin with, we must invest less in police and more in social workers. Next paragraph, we must invest less in police and more in social supports in our schools. Next paragraph, we must invest less in police and more in mental health aid. The entire op-ed advocates for abolishing the police. Our Democratic senators are getting ready to vote for her to put her in one of the senior positions of the Department of Justice. And she and Ms. Gupta are two of the leading advocates in the country for abolishing the police. And we're not in Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass, where we simply assert things that are that are not. They have said it in writing repeatedly. You can't pretend it doesn't exist, nor do I believe Democratic members of this body can pretend they don't support the positions they are voting for. I can tell you under no circumstances what I vote to confirm a senior official at the Department of Justice who had vocally, vigorously, and recently advocated abolishing the police. And by the way, with Ms. Clark, this is not a new passion of hers. She has spent her life on the extreme left wing. When she was a student at Columbia, she helped organize a conference, a conference on the left, and I, I have in front of me an article from foxnews.com dated April 9th, 2021, the title of which is, New Findings Show Biden DOJ Nominee Organized Conference Championing Cop Killers. And Mr. Chairman, I'd ask unanimous consent to enter this article on the record as well. Without objection. This article goes through transcripts from the hearing, from the conference, rather, that she, she organized. The conference was entitled, quote, Racing Justice, and it featured speakers defending, celebrating, and lionizing one after the other cop killers, people who had murdered police officers, describing them as political prisoners. Convicted cop killer Mumia Abu-Jabal, convicted cop killer Mutula Shakur, convicted cop killer Sundiata Ak Akoli, and Tom Manning. Not only that, they also referred to as a political prisoner, Susan Rosenberg, who was convicted of transporting multiple illegal firearms and over 740 pounds of explosives. Ms. Rosenberg was also a member of the American Communist Terrorist Group, the May 19th communist organization that bombed the United States Capitol on November 7th, 1983. We've heard lots of Democratic members of this, th th this body speaking in high dungeon about the terrorist atta attack that all of us experienced on January 6th of this year. And yet, Ms. Rosenberg actually carried out a communist attack that bombed the United States Capitol. And what did Ms. Clark do? Organize a conference celebrating someone who bombed the United States Capitol as a political prisoner. That's extreme. That's radical. By the way, I will point out, Mr. Blumenthal spoke just a moment ago about anti-Semitism. At that same conference, one of these radical speakers downplayed and diminished the Holocaust in her remarks saying, quote, it was only six million Jews killed in the camps and prisons of Germany and Poland. That's reprehensible. That's the kind of vicious anti-Semitism, sadly, we see on the extreme left and the extreme right. But Ms. Clark organized that conference, that, those, one of the speakers at her conference. And if you say, well, maybe those are not her views. I have in front of me an email she sent on June 25th, 1999. It says... I'm going to read in relevant part. Whoever thinks chattel slavery is gone is not with us in the real world. 
Some aspects of it have changed, like cars, modernized for the times. The old chains are now less visible, fitted by the media and schools and laws. The plantations are called plants or factories or whatever they call the myriad squalid money-making machines in which the rulers exploit black people and the whole working class. The Klan is now the police, with blue uniforms replacing the sheets and hoods. The corrupt, racist judges are petty Klan administrators. The Senator, Klegals of the bourgeois state, Claven. Senator, before you arrived this morning, we asked members to try to confine their remarks to 10 minutes, and all, virtually all of them. Uh, I, I'm nearing the end of my remarks, and, and I recognize the last time we had a hearing, the chairman broke the rules and violated the rules of this committee to try to silence to that, speaking. I want you to and I understand why you interrupt me in the middle of this email, because it is so extreme uh, sure that I recognize, don't. Mr. Chairman, you don't want the American people to hear what's in this email. I have, a, I have, without objection, put into record everything you've asked. I'm not afraid of what you're going to say. I'm just wondering if it's going to come to an end soon. Uh, it's going to come to an end soon. It would have been sooner without the interruption, but it, but it will come to an end soon. And now that we're at it, I would ask unanimous consent to enter this email into the record. Without objection. So what I was reading when, when the chairman interrupted me, the corrupt racist judges are petty clan administrators. The Klegals of the bourgeois state's Claven, their courts. The midnight torch burning torture sessions before the neck stretching and black corpse burning. To each of my Democratic colleagues on this committee, Ms. Clark in writing said, I want to read the sentence that on this copy is highlighted, the Klan is now the police with blue uniforms replacing the sheets and hoods. You do not get to pretend you are defenders of law enforcement when you vote to confirm someone who describes police officers as the Klan and who has advocated repeatedly in writing for abolishing the police. This is radical, this is extreme, and the Democratic senators on this committee know that, and yet you are giving in to the crazy, angry left in your party. I ask you to pull back. I ask you to think of what your constituents want. How many of your constituents agree with this statement, and to each of you, I suggest be prepared when you return home. The people of Illinois do not agree with the statement, the Klan is now the police with blue uniforms replacing the sheets and hoods. And this committee should not confirm someone who said such a thing to be a senior official at the Department of Justice. Senator Rono.